No, your eyes are not deceiving you. I have not done a worst to best list in ages. And I was thinking about what to start it off with. So I did ask people on my Facebook page and someone said, how about a Doctor Who one? And I thought that was a brilliant idea. With Doctor Who Flux just finishing, I thought I'd go back and rank all six episodes from worst to best. Number six, Once Upon a Time. Right, before I actually get started saying why this is at the bottom, I want to say that none of these episodes are actually that bad. In fact, Doctor Who Flux is actually a rarity, the fact that it isn't a bad episode. However, this is a worst to best list, so it means one episode has to be at the bottom, and unfortunately, Once Upon a Time is that episode. And the reason being is, although it's full of information and progresses the overall story, and it is done in a way that is new and unique, but that new and unique didn't quite work. It left the story a little bit mind boggling. But after that, we got lots of answers and lots more questions. And as the audience, it kept us captivated throughout the entire episode. It just the way it was done didn't really catch on. But as I said, it's not a terrible episode overall. Number five, the Halloween apocalypse. To be fair, this episode was always going to be near the bottom. This episode is the episode, and all that it's here for is to explain the rest of the series. This episode is here just to set up the entire aspect of the flux, and oh my god, it did it brilliantly. I mean, destroying planets, seeing random aliens that we've never seen before actually dying. But unfortunately, because this is pure exposition, that is why it was always going to suffer and try and not as be as high up as it could have been. But as a series opener and as an episode, it was good. It was just full of exposition. Number three, Survivors of the Flux. Let's face it, this series, episodes one, three and five are purely there as exposition to set up the next episode. And that is always going to be, I mean, in one aspect, it's a good thing in a worst to best list. It gives this, right, the bottom half of the list is exposition. This is just going to explain. And out of the three exposition episodes, this is the best of the three. It really answers some questions. It also does things a little bit better explaining what the Timeless Child was than the Timeless Child episode. Let's not talk about that episode today. But, this episode does actually explain quite a lot. It explains a lot more about the flux. It explores a lot more about the division and it also shows why the Doctor is such a dangerous enemy going forward. But other than that, it's still an exposition episode with one goal and that's to set up the next episode. However, that being said, this had some brilliant, if not, not quite right Easter eggs, showing off the Brigadier before he was the Brigadier, bringing back Kate Stewart, a fan favourite, and also finally answering the guy or the question of who the hell that guy walking around the tunnels was. And it was all done in such a brilliant way that out of the exposition episodes, this is the best one. However, the rest of the episodes are all a lot more action based and <laughs> what can I say? I love action. Number three, The Vanquishers. So onto the three episodes that are more, as I said, action packed. And at the bottom of that list is going to be The Vanquishers. And to be fair, it was a good episode to end the series on. In fact, if you look over the past few seasons, this is the best season finale we've actually had in such a long time. And brilliant and kudos to Chris Chibnall for actually giving us an exciting finale. However, this finale isn't without its flaws. I did get the impression this finale is rather rushed, which is surprising the fact that the rest of the series, it was all paced perfectly. This is the only episode that I feel had a bit of a pacing issue. Like I said, it was just rushed. But other than that, it was a good entertaining episode, a brilliant way to stop the flux. Spoilers if you've not seen it, but yeah, I was actually happy with this episode. I liked this episode. It was a nice way to end the series and it was a nice way to set up and drop the little snippets of what we're to expect in Jodie Whittaker's last three episodes that are coming up. I enjoyed this as a series finale. Not the best episode in the series, but still definitely worth a watch. Number two, 
War of the Sun Sirens. Now I'm going to be honest, first and second place are going to be very, we're always going to be very close. And I think there's going to be a lot of discussions in regards to what is the best episode and what is the second place episode because the last two episodes are absolutely amazing, absolutely brilliantly. However, I'm putting this one as the second, as number second, because let's face it, it is more of a stereotypical Doctor Who episode rather than an episode in an accomplished six part drama. And that is the reason why I've dropped it. But other than that, it was brilliant. Fantastic for bringing the Sontarans back and making them more warmongering than ever before. And that line, I want to ride a horse. I have never laughed so much at a joke in Doctor Who. This episode was brilliant, it was historical. This is Doctor Who's strength, bringing in something historical, adding it to uh, futuristic stuff, and the fact that everyone gets their chance to do something over two different time frames. Brilliant, but not quite enough for the number one spot. Number one, Village of the Angels. Out of New Who, Blink, is arguably the best episode of New Who. Fight me if you disagree with me, because I also think you're wrong. But that being said, I've since then, Weeping Angels have been a fan favourite that unfortunately have not had good treatment. So when it came to the past that Chris Chibnall was writing an episode about the Weeping Angels, a lot of people sighed, and we were wrong. They have never been as scary as this before. The, uh, this story was brilliant. It made the angels deadly. It also brought in all the things that people didn't like about the angels, like the angels talking, but it brought it back in and brought it back in a good, fantastic way and made them eerie. And that was the brilliant. And once again, splitting across two time streams, separating the main cast so they both have their adventures with the angels and actually really delving into how ruthless and evil these angels can be. This has to be the top episode of Doctor Who series 13 or Doctor Who Flux. And let's not get started on that ending. Who saw that ending coming? No one did. And that was brilliant. I was so gobsmacked. I actually went and watched the episode literally again the moment it finished. It was that good. So in, to, in my opinion, that is the best episode of Doctor Who Flux. But that we've discussed the entire series briefly and quickly, but what do you think? Is my order okay? Is, do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments below. I mean, there's only six entries in this list. I have got more entries coming up. There is a mega epic Marvel based list coming up with 70 entries. Please come back and check that out. If you like any of, if you like this video and want to see more content, hit that subscribe button, join us on our Facebook page, but hopefully I get to see you again soon. Thank you very much. Bye bye.